Hello everybody, thanks for watching another episode of Cat Science Show. Today we're on location at a park called Holland Lake Park in the beautiful Weatherford, Texas. And we're gonna take a look at an ecosystem. And the kind of ecosystem we're looking at today is a pond ecosystem. So we're gonna show you some animals and plants that live here, as well as the parts of the ecosystem that support life. So that would be things that provide a water source, food, and shelter for the other living things. All right guys, so here we're getting a closer look at the lake or the pond. I was calling it a pond because it is a small lake. So it's very much like a pond. So I'm getting kind of a close look here at the pond and the lake. And all the way around the lake, there's lots of vegetation that comes right up against the water. We have lots of pretty flowers and long grass. And we're gonna take a little bit of a closer look at the water to see maybe if we can spy some little living creatures in there, if I can get a little closer. Yep, I just saw some mosquito fish. fish here and the fish use that moss see all that green moss in the water they use that moss as shelter while they're in the water so that protects them from any birds predators or bigger fish that might try to eat them I also see this very tall grass and that tall grass could be a shelter for snakes birds could also be a shelter for small rodents. If I'm looking out over the pond, I also see insects. So we're gonna take another look at a different part of the pond to see if we can spy any more living things and then discuss how the living things use items in their ecosystem to be able to survive. I see what is called a bell diver spider right there. He's floating on top of the water looking for some things to eat. Okay, another part of the pond is surrounding it. So uh, when I get further away from the pond, I see grassy areas and tree areas. We live in the prairies and lake region of Texas. And in that region, we're very lucky because we have lots of lakes, lots of grass, lots of trees, lots of rain and water sources. And this tree is fallen, it's a fallen tree. And I want you to be thinking about what kinds of organisms or living things can use this fallen tree for shelter. Okay, while I'm looking around the pond and the vegetation that surrounds the pond, I've also spotted some honeysuckles. And you might have some more up here. You might have honeysuckles growing in your yard. I know they like to kind of grow over the fence. We have some in our yard. And inside that honeysuckle, there is a food source for insects and birds called nectar. So this is part of the ecosystem that could provide a food source for a consumer, which would be a bird or an insect or possibly even a small animal or an animal that could reach where the honeysuckles are. Kind of catch some of the organisms that live in this pond. And she has caught this frog. Lila, do you know what kind that is? I believe it's a leopard frog. Okay. Let me see him. Or a spring peeper. And so a minute ago, we um, caught oh, some oh. little tiny mosquito fish. Don't do we that. caught a spider 
on film. And so I bet those are some things, uh, some food sources for this frog here. There's tons of insects. And we're gonna let him go back so that he can go, go into forth. the safety of his shelter here go at forth. the pond. Yay! There he goes, he's off. He's safe now. Maybe we can get a look at the type of species of fish that live like in this pond. Fish? Yeah, just like that. Lila caught one. <gasps> oh my gosh, she has little stripes on that guy. That's cool. Oh, don't. So die. we're trying to um, be respectful to the animals as we can, just like a field biologist would now or an ecologist would. So this is a very healthy ecosystem because we see water source, we see lots of opportunities for living things to have shelter, we see lots of living things, we see a lot of biodiversity, so lots of different plants and lots of different types of living animal species. Okay, so Lila caught another fish here. He looks very similar to the um, fish that we just caught. And we're gonna catch and release. Go back. So it's nice and safe for him. And also put the algae back as it is part of their natural ecosystem. Or as much of it as you can because it sticks to everything. These well, are what we saw in the water earlier. It's a mosquito fish. And they're great for a pond habitat because they help to kill off the mosquito larva. That's what they use as their food source. I'm gonna put this little dude back. Boop. Oh, that was awesome. I, don't know. I don't know if we can see that on film or not, but we just saw a pretty good sized bass. It was in a the small pond. mouth because it had a line on it. Okay, so we stumbled across another part of the pond, and this looks like it would be a great habitat for lots of living things. There's lots of shelter provided by these tall plants. However, the other thing we noticed is because humans have left trash behind, they've actually caused an impact on the environment. And so we need to just kind of keep that in mind if we visit a park or an area where lots of animals and plants live that we do not want to leave our trash behind because it does impact the environment. This is the only home that these fish have and these plants and the birds and the insects that live here have. So we want to make sure that we keep that in mind whenever we bring trash into a place we want to make sure to remove that trash so it doesn't impact the habitat of all these living creatures oh child okay so we kind of got a lucky grab there and caught a turtle it looks like um, a common red species ear. um here and that is a red ear slider and he's pretty small in size child a juvenile turtle Let's see if he's starting to kind of come out. I so turtles kind of have their built-in shelter and protection. They go and retreat into their shells when they think they're in danger. So that's pretty cool. They are aquatic species. So he does Hi. depend on the pond and water to be able to survive. But they're reptiles. So he does not have gills. He comes up to get a breath of breath of fresh air. You're turning on his belly if you're okay with that. So you can look at his belly. You gotta be careful with these guys because they got long necks. But as you can see, this is probably a female because it's scooped is a different shape and it also has green eyes. Bright green. And he's coming out and I think he's gonna or she is going to try to bite me if I do not keep my hands away from that very, very sharp yeah, piece. She's trying to figure out what's going on. Oh, I see a little claw coming out. Oh, I was trying to swim. Awesome. Oh, it peed on me. Hello, little. That's his defense mechanism. So yeah, that's a red ear slider. You can see those red slits, or the, not slits, but the, the red colorings on the side of his head there, or her head. So that's another species that we saw that depends on this ecosystem to survive. A small child. Boop! And it's as quick as that, back in its habitat. So it says this area is a living museum of nature. You are a guest in a plant and wildlife community, which is preserved so that you and yours may observe, understand, and enjoy the plants and animals as nature makes them. Tread lightly here, give gentle care, 
that none of it shall perish. So it also shows the date 1972 when this park was established by the Hood Parker Conservation District. Mm -hmm.